this morning. Um, I have a few announcements for you. Uh, the first one is Jane has told me that we do not have any eggs to sell today. I know, the, the chicken girls are on a bit of a sabbatical. Uh, very understandable, they're taking their winter break. So maybe uh, in a couple weeks we will have more. Um, and then we also uh, have a baptism today, which is very exciting. We'll be baptizing Cameron Johnson, who is about a month old and is already sleeping in his mom's arms. So uh, we will have a little itty bitty guy to baptize today, which will be wonderful. Um, and then also after worship, we have coffee hour down in Luther Hall. I hope you are able to stay to join us for that. Um, and then we want to say thank you uh, to Lynn Goss, who has been here with us uh, through the summer and then remained. Lynn has really been our steadfast in the midst of this transition of looking for a director of music. And she has been kind and getting to know everyone, and we are ever so grateful for the ways that you have led us musically, but also the way that you have just been really kind and supportive to us during this time, too. So we hope this is not goodbye forever, but just still come visit. Uh, but just wanted to say a really big thank you to you. We are ever grateful for having you with us. Um, and then uh, next week, we will have one more week where we will, before Jeff Siros, our uh, new director of music, arrives, and Ed Galinsky will be leading us uh, in music. Uh, and then uh, the first Sunday Jeff will be with us will be February 12th, and he will kind of gather the choirs the week after that. So looking forward to having him begin with us too and praying for him as he is saying goodbye to the congregation that he is currently serving. So with that, those are all of the announcements I have, other than to make sure you look in your bulletin for all of the announcements. So let's take a moment to take a deep breath and center ourselves for worship by listening to the praises.
time, I'd like to invite any kiddos who would like to go to Sunday school to go meet Miss Danielle on the side. Um, and we hope you have a great time at Sunday school. And please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. given in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. 
Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace, that in our words and deeds the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs> first reading is the Lord having a conversation with the people through the prophet Micah, chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised. What Balaam, son of Beor, answered him? And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal? That you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him? with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000s of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body 
for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has, I'm sorry, that is not today's reading. That is last week's reading. No wonder. <laughs> All right, still 1 Corinthians and still the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater? of this age. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger 
than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one may boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. flips it around 
and tells us that those things that we certainly would not call blessed or blessing, those groups of people that we would not consider well off, Jesus tells us in the kingdom of God, all of that is flipped upside down. And really, those are the ones that Jesus is deeming as blessed. And so, you know, this sense of blessing, it kind of shows that uh, what we would take as considered blessing is kind of the opposite. You know, when someone says, God bless you, I don't think they are blessing you with being poor in spirit, blessing you with grief or being meek with depression or lack of power. They probably want the exact opposite of those things for you. But I think sometimes we can read the Beatitudes and we can see the Beatitudes as kind of this checklist that we need to check off. Or as we're reading them, we think to ourselves, which one of these falls for me right now? Can I consider myself blessed based on what Jesus is saying here in the Sermon of the Mount? Have I mourned? Have I mourned enough to be considered blessed? Have I been poor in spirit enough? But that's a trap that we fall into. And when we do that, we end up missing the really radical point of the Beatitudes that's here. That blessing is not something that we need to check off a to-do list in order to receive, but blessing is given to us simply because God, Jesus, declares it so. It is not something that we earn, but it is something that is just freely given to us. The part about the Beatitudes is that it is precisely those that the world would often leave behind, that the world often doesn't see, is who Jesus is deeming as blessed in this scripture. Who do you think in your life needs to hear that they are blessed when maybe they feel like all else is going against them? Who in our city of Manchester, who in our country, who in our world do we really need to hold up as blessed because we seem to have forgotten about them? Nadia Boltz Weber, she was a pastor in Colorado. She wrote a book. You probably have heard of her. She went to the um, ELCA Youth Gathering. Uh, she swears sometimes. Um, as a pastor and has some tattoos, so that's kind of cool and fun. Um, but she uh, has really beautiful theology and is really great with words. And so I share with you, she made this video um, by Makers where she kind of takes a modern take on the Beatitudes. And I'd like to share with you those, what I consider really beautiful words that she has written. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt, those who aren't sure, those who can still be surprised. Blessing are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones, for whom tears could fill an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who no one notices. The kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables the laundry guys at the hospitals, the sex workers, and the night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underrepresented. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, 
the ones for whom life is hard. For Jesus chose to surround himself with people like them. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people. Blessed are the burnt out social workers and the overwhelmed teachers and the pro bono case, pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kind-hearted NFL players and the fundraising trophy wives. And blessed are the kids who step between the bullies and the weak. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, for they totally get it. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. The Beatitudes show us that God shows up in places where we rarely expect. And that one of the most beautiful things I think we can do for one another as human beings is to bless one another, to name one another as blessed in the midst of whatever we happen to be going through, to name that God walks alongside us in the joy and in the grief and in the struggle. So let us continue to bless one another, reminding one another of how the kingdom of God is really that headstand that is upside down. That today we get to see God claim Cameron as a child of God and name him as blessed here when he is only a month old, where he certainly, I mean, he's adorable and sleeps really cute and eats but hasn't completed any checklists, I imagine, yet. But God claims him as loved and blessed and as a child of God. So today, receive this blessing for wherever you find yourself today. If it is feeling joy, if it is in the midst of things that are really hard to understand, if it's in the midst of transition, if it's in the midst of deep grief, or maybe excitement. Receive this blessing that you are blessed, not because of anything that you do. You are loved simply because we have a God who proclaims it so and continues to come to us and give us that love and that mercy and that forgiveness. You are blessed. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents this child for baptism? We present Cameron for baptism. Frederick called by and Ashley called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, you desire to have Cameron baptized. As you bring Cameron to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer, so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Cameron grow in the Christian faith and life? If you do, please say we do. We, we do. do. And Jesse, do you promise to nurture Cameron in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion uh, with the church? If you do, please say I do. I do. And people of God, do you promise? to support Cameron and pray for him in his new life in Christ. If you do very enthusiastically, please say we do. We do. Very good. Please stand as you are able. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God? and the ways of sin that draw you from God. If you do, please say, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Pilate, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Please be seated. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, Cameron. Hey, buddy. Hi, I know. I'll try 
give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Cameron Matthew with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Cameron Matthew, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. All right, Cameron, you get to walk around with me. Hi. Hi. You can just say hi to everybody. Come on, buddy. So this is Cameron, who's kind of snoozing, making a couple little noises for us. But this is Cameron, who we have all made promises to. That means that all of you have made a promise that you will help raise him in the faith. Which means, as he gets older, and maybe is no longer sleeping through worship, but instead is talking through worship, it's totally fine, right? Because it's welcome, joyful noise as we get to hear him say some of his first words. And all of you will be there as he gets older and begins to wonder some of those really, really big questions like, does my dog go to heaven? And, uh, well, all of that, there's bigger questions. I don't know why that's the one that I came up with. But all of you will be there to sit with him in that, to sometimes say that confidently that you do have an answer to it, and sometimes to confidently say that you don't, that it's something that we just trust in. That you'll sit with him in his doubts, sit with him as he learns and grows, and we get to see what he's gifted at, we get to see what he, the adult he turns into, and when he's 16, if there are not self-driving cars by then, and he's learning to drive and he scratches your car, it's okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Right? But you will get to remind him over and over again, as we heard in the Beatitudes today, that he is blessed, that he is loved, no matter what happens to him and no matter what he does, that there will be nothing that will ever erase that cross of Christ that is on his forehead. So what a privilege that all of you have to get to walk with Cameron through this. He's really out now, isn't he? Can you know, I just hang out with him all of worship? It's been really nice for me to hold him, itty bitty guy. I will try to see if he. There you go, buddy. All right. So, Cameron, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Together, let us welcome Cameron Michael. Matthew, sorry. <laughs> we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming gifts. God of tenderness, source of all goodness, your son took children up in his arms and blessed them. Hold Cameron in the strong arms of your love. Look with kindness upon him and upon his family as they support him in, their bapti in his baptismal life. Continue to sustain each one of us in the gift of baptism so that we may carry your loving, saving word into all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh. 
Oh, you can't pull it out. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, please hold it the entire time. <laughs> All together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Cultivate humility in your church, in gatherings of every size. Teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Merciful God. The foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains and hills echo with your holiness. When we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us with reverent awe to honor all you have made. Merciful God. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of the peacemakers. Merciful God. Bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power and presence and work where it is least expected. Give your life strength and wisdom to all in need. Merciful God, as with your people Israel, remind this congregation of your saving acts. Remind us how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weakness. Establish the cross as the center of our life together. Merciful God, praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place. Trusting you accompany them in poverty, persecution, and in every trial. We trust you abide with your people always. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes. God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another with the sign of that.
stand as you are able. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power, and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We do the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, to receive communion. If this is your first time here or your 800th time here, you are welcome at this table of grace. You're invited to come down the center aisle, beginning from the front row and moving towards the back. And when you come forward, you will receive a wafer and there are small cups of red wine and of white grape juice. And you can place those small cups in the receptacle on either side as you go back to your pews by way of the side aisle. We also have a gluten-free option if you are in need of that. Just ask for that when you come forward as well. But the most important part is that you know that you are welcome here and that you know that Jesus meets us here. Come and taste the joy of God. Amen.
strengthened to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. A God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen.